So welcome to this video on GIMP versus Photoshop. So today I just want to look at three things that GIMP does better than Photoshop. So yes, GIMP does do a few things better than Photoshop, at least in my opinion. And we're going to start with number three. So number three is a pretty minor one, but it's something that has always annoyed me in Photoshop. And when I came across it in GIMP, I really liked how, how they made it. And that is the canvas size dialog box. So go into image and canvas size. Now why I find this important is, is that coming from the print industry, so sometimes I'm printing my photographs, a lot of the times if we're printing we want to put them in frames and we want a white border around it. And if we're putting them in frames with a white border, the standard is normally that we want the bottom border to be slightly larger than the other four borders. That just is to prevent, prevent this optical illusion that if you put the image in the middle of the borders, it always looks like it's lower. So by making the bottom border a little bit bigger, it avoids that optical illusion. And the one reason why I don't like it in Photoshop is, is because the way the dialog box for a canvas size is set up. So if I change this to centimeters, and if I simply want to add four centimeter border around it, so I go, and type my operator, so I want to type uh, plus 8 here, then tab over, and then I want to add plus 8 here, and now I have this 8 centimeter border, and I just need to offset it. So I have the offset dialog box here, so I can change that two centimeters. And I can set my offset to, if I want it in the center, I can set it to four and four, and that puts it in the center. If I want it to be three at the top and four and five at the bottom, I can just type in three here, and now it's gonna be three at the top and four, uh, sorry, five at the bottom. So that's a nice way of offsetting it. So when I go click resize, I have my border already, so shift, Control J, and you can see the border is there and ready. Whereas in Photoshop, inside Photoshop, if I want to add a border, I would go to my image canvas size dialog box, and in here I can do well relative, I can click on that, but if I click eight and eight, it's gonna place it right in the center, no matter what I do. So normally what I have to do is, is for the height, I come in here, type three, specify that it's only going to get expanded on the top, click on OK, and then come here and go image, canvas size, and I want my height to be five, but only affect the bottom, and then click on OK. So number two on my list, so this has to do with adding the displace maps in the software, so GIMP does it better because GIMP gives you live displacement maps, so it shows you your adjustments as you're making them. So if I come here, I've got this text with my text there below. I've already created a displaced map, as you can see here. Uh, if you want to figure out know how to do this, you can have another video, which I'll put a link to below, on creating displaced maps inside GIMP. So I go to my filters, I go to map, and I go to displaced map. Let's zoom into 100% so we can see the effect. Go back to filters, uh, map, and displace. So I'm going to choose my aux input, which is from this file, and my displaced map layer, which I double click. And then I just start simply dragging my horizontal displacement, and I see the live displace as I'm dragging it. I see the effect of my displacement. I can also choose center displacement, which I find gives a slightly more accurate displace map. I've got a bit too strong here with this one. Uh, so yeah. And then I click on OK. But at all times I have live and I can preview on and off. I can get a split preview of what's happening with my displaced map. And I click OK. One drawback is, of course, inside GIMP it is a destructive edit. Inside Photoshop it's a non-destructive edit, but inside GIMP it's a destructive edit. So if I want to do this in Photoshop, the first thing I would do is turn my text into a smart filter for smart filters. In order to make it a non-destructive edit, we'll just do, we'll, we can zoom in 
on this a little bit and then I can go to my filter menu I find it under distort and displays so now I have to choose my figures so I have to choose so first of all I might try 10 I have to choose my settings here I have to click on OK then I have to find my file and I have to click on OK and it might end up that OK well that's too much OK this is a non-destructive edit so I don't have to undo it I can just simply come to my smart filter layers click on double click on displace and then re-enter some values here and go again and choose my map so you don't get that live it change as you're changing it so for me I think it does that slightly better so the third and final one for me is got to be live gradients so I'm just going to come in here and delete I have a, a mask already added so I'm just going to delete it so the advantage of live gradients what's the advantage of having a live gradient yes you can see what the gradient looks like before you created it it has other advantages in compositing too so if we take this image where I've created a reflection of this lighter on the surface and I want to then as what happens with reflections is they fade off so I want to add a, a layer mask here which I do I want to add my uh, mask so I have my mask it's just going to be white full opacity I click add then with my layer mask selected and let's just go back to tools paint tools gradient drag up from the bottom and now what do I see yes I see my live gradient so I can now decide how I want this to look okay maybe I want it a bit stronger at the bottom maybe I want to fall off to happen a little bit quicker but I can see it here before I execute anything I can change it I can add more points to this uh, gradient line if I want to to change the fall off so this is fantastic and then I hit enter when I'm happy with it inside Photoshop unfortunately we don't have the same level of control at the moment live gradients will be coming because they're currently available you can see them inside the beta version of Photoshop if you have that downloaded and you choose a gradient tool you can use live gradients but at the moment it's not available in the regular version of Photoshop so here I have the same thing I have a reflection on this wood surface I want to again use my gradient tool so I select my gradient tool I've got black to white and I start with my gradient mask and there the gradient is, is, is created I, I have to go back and I have to I don't need to go back necessarily but I have to start playing around with it, start dropping it from different points. You don't need to necessarily start it again, which is one advantage, but maybe you know you, you, you've got to keep playing around with it and you don't have the option to add more points, so you can't control its fall off. Uh, you would have to control that in, in other ways, but not with you can't control it with the gradient tool necessarily. Yeah, so that was number three. Let me know what you think. Are there any other tools that you think in GIMP that do things better than they do in Photoshop? Put it in the comments below and give the video a like and hit subscribe. Thank you for watching.